So it is an honor uh, for me to present this, and uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Moura and the CBS, in fact, for this Bachelorette Conference, which I felt could be the good platform, the influential platform, especially for a country, small country like Bhutan, to influence and get the governance and administrative aspect to be integrated in the system, especially in the Bhutanese context. So I feel like this platform is really pushing ahead with the fourth uh, you know, like, uh, year of the conference. So I felt like uh, this is first of its kind that uh, I think uh, Bhutan had been presenting on uh, uh, the Vajrayana conference based on mindfulness. And what I was shocked is about the interest that is built in mindfulness and how it can really take it uh, through 1960s. But what I found was this particular interesting, you know, like uh, bibliographical uh, record since 1966 to 2021, that Bhutan is still a blanket white. So I felt like maybe this is uh, me the first time presenting on mindfulness, maybe a contribution attempt towards, you know, Vajrayana and mindfulness. So the study that I have looked at uh, is going to take you through three important things, basically to look at mindfulness and how does this impact the academic performance, social emo emotional skills of graduates who top the national service examination for the PGD, postgraduate diploma and Royal Institute of Management where I work as a lecturer down there. And this study is in fact, we have participants, some of the participants here who have been already some of the respondents in my study. and. Uh, in my study, and I have my colleague, Lung Den, who could not attend here, but I'm presenting on behalf of our research. Second thing I want to look at is on the mindfulness. Does it matter? Did it matter with the gender? How does the mindfulness actually matter with the gender in terms of academic performance and social and emotional learning skills? Uh, I hope, like all of you here, agree that mindfulness since 60s has uh, come up with so many, you know, like uh, academic journals and articles uh, and would agree that it would have a positive impact on academic performance and social and emotional, uh, you know, like uh, learning skills. But however, having said that, this is unique in terms of the first of its case for the postgraduate diploma who had been selected as a top graduates uh, from the national examination. And third thing I would like to put is uh, to look at how does this particular I mean, like group of uh, respondents, the PGD trainees, uh, feel in terms of academic, social, and emotional stress. So these are three different area, areas where we looked at into uh, looking at the, uh, the correlation between mind, mindfulness and these three different uh, variables as, dip, as dependent variables. Now, looking at this, we, we took a mindfulness, a definition of mindfulness as simple as paying attention in a particular way and on purpose in the present moment, non-judgmentally, non, uh, which means like uh, this is a definition, we, we took it for our research to be measured as an uh, independent variable. And in terms of social and emotional learning, uh, we defined it as process necessary to understand and manage emotions set and achieve positive goals, uh, fail and show empathy to empathy for others, establish and manage positive relations and make responsible and collective decisions. Uh, in terms of design and instrument, uh, this is an uh, instrument that has been popularly used throughout since uh, the 70s. And in fact, uh, the author, in fact, a lot of mindful research, uh, research that has been conducted throughout in different languages in different countries, this is one of the popular uh, skills that they have used it. And we felt that this is a, a very much uh, scientific to use it here in Bhutan's case as well, where the scale uh, consists of 15 different items to be measured in six uh, point light curve scale, uh, which really defines on respondents' uh, practice on mindfulness. And on the dependent variable side, we looked at uh, the emotional and social learning skills, which is measured on 10 different items, which is also measured in six different uh, Likert, uh, six levels of Likert scale. And we have used multi-logit and revisional using SPSS to really look at this correlation and uh, the analysis of two different variables. Now, in terms of uh, the academic performance, uh, 
uh, we have looked into uh, five different categories whereby the the data are collected from the two terms results of the PG trainees at RI. So these are the five different uh, categories of the students who uh, have uh, their results being uh, achieved in two different terms, like SD being from 85 to 100 and with the uh, fail percentage from 0 to 49. If they uh, get 49, they are uh, under fail category. So we are trying to look at whether this particular achievement had been you know, achieved through mindfulness. How does it really correlate and impact uh, the student's achievement? Like I said, uh, we took uh, three different postgraduate uh, diplomas uh, trainees. So firstly, 45 numbers of them in PG Diploma in Public Administration. And we have PG Diploma in National Law. Uh, with 30 re respondents and PG Diploma in Financial Management with 33 respondents. So this is total of 100% uh, of respondents that have actually participated in this particular survey and sampling. Now last year, these trainees who had been trained down there uh, last year, we have 108 and uh, there's almost equal number uh, ratio between the male and female with at least, I think, four more respondents uh, from female. Now, in terms of results and discussions, what we looked at is, since uh, this is not uh, the experimental-based uh, research, which we could not really look at the control group and as well as the experimental group, we tried to look at uh, using the mass scale method of Ryan, and we found that at least 63 of them, 35 female and 28 male, are one way or another, other randomly they are doing a medi uh, in the mindful practice. And there are people who, respondents, like at least with 21.3 percentage, uh, which is a uh, total number of 23, that uh, they never did a mindfulness practice. And there are few of them, 11 of them, who does daily practice of mindfulness. And weekly with nine, uh, nine respondents, and monthly at least uh, two respondents there. But here, as I informed, I mean, as I shared, shared before, uh, most of them are into random uh, practice of mindfulness. And uh, I think there are people who never got introduced to mindfulness. Now, what we found here was, uh, it was interesting to know that uh, even at the random case, but this is something that we felt, since it is not an experimental base of research, the random uh, mindfulness practice with the largest number of people practicing mindfulness could at least uh, get achieve uh, the credit, you know, like uh, performance in their academic uh, ratings. But however, those people who are meditating daily, mostly at the top ranking from uh, first rank to the fifth rank of RCC examination, it is found that most of them lies in the HD. So which correlates to us that with mindfulness, at least people have higher tendency of getting getting HD level of academic performance. Whereas, at least uh, for people, majority of them could at least uh, get a credit uh, uh, achievement with a random uh, mindfulness practice. But one interesting thing here we could look at is people who even never me uh, meditated or you know like uh, did not have mindfulness practice, they did not feel. So this could be, uh, we are not sure the r reason behind this, since uh, mindfulness is one of the factors uh, which we took it as one of the factors we took amongst uh, so many factors. So this could be one of the area of research where we could look at and maybe the context of uh, Bhutan being spiritually, you know, like uh, uh, spiritually uh, uh, valued in terms of uh, the culture and the practice that we, we have it. This could be one of the influence. In terms of uh, social skills, uh, what we found was most of them are neutral, meaning that uh, we've, we found that the social skills of the most of the trainees are not very much significant to the mindfulness. And in terms of emotional skills, most of them rated poor and neutral. This also shows that mindfulness actually is not very much significant with in terms of uh, social skills with the PGD trainees. Now this is very interesting 
that uh, uh, that random most of them who actually you know like meditated or practice mindfulness uh, is related to having poor or neutral uh, emotional skills learning skills now we looked at whether how stressful they are now this is very much uh, again other uh, factor which felt it that uh, since most of them are randomly practicing and only few of them are practicing weekly or daily so most of them actually felt that academic stress is too much so this shows that people who actually have high or more frequency of mindfulness practice are less stress than people who randomly you know like practice the uh, mindfulness so which i think uh, is very much significant in terms of the findings that uh, most of the researchers around the globe have looked at it the other interesting thing is this people have looked at it that uh, social stress is not much with the uh, with the trainees so this shows that uh, this is a surprise uh, result for us in fact uh, despite uh, random mindfulness practice they are not very much uh, socially stressful they are not very much socially stressed so this is something different from what the uh, the literatures or the findings around the globe have looked at it and in terms of emotional st stress also they said like they are not very much stress emotionally now this also does not really you know like correlate with the mindfulness practice that has been found by so many you know like uh, researchers around the globe so this is something very much uh, unique and different from a lot of the you know like uh, papers or research that has been done globally so we are thinking that there is or there is scope that some factors might be playing uh, in the context of uh, Bhutanese uh, students at PGD level whereby they are not very much stressful in terms of social and emotional learning so this is something that uh, you cannot really relate to or compare with the international or the, the research that has been done by uh, scholars so this is also what they felt it like in terms of mindfulness they felt like at least uh, it reduces the stress but uh, again uh, there are only a few of them who does a daily meditation but this is also one of the uh, result which we could not really correlate to why their social and emotional stress are being minimal despite the random practice of the mindfulness now in conclusion what we found was there was no significant difference observed on gender based mindfulness despite uh, you know like equal almost equal number of ratio between male and female or pgds uh, both for uh, academic performance and social and emotional learning skills and there is at least a significant correlation to academic performance those who have actually uh, done a weekly and daily mindful practice have a you know a higher performance which is proven from their ranks in rcc as well as in the term exam uh, that is conducted by royal institute of management subsequently the random mindfulness corresponds significance to the credit academic achievement so those people who are doing random mindfulness practice uh, correlates with the uh, academic like i said uh, but none of them actually failed despite not even uh, practicing a mindfulness so this is very interesting to look at it maybe other factors are playing on this and there's a significant relation uh, to academic performance but no significant relation, relation correlation to uh, the stress level of social and emotional stress so this is uh, uh, the findings of the uh, the research that we took the inside what we could look at is so simpson actually have looked at like different factors such as spiritual experience or greater sense of well-being and life satisfaction could be one of the factor whereby there is a different uh, reason since bhutan and the people uh, bhutanese are known to be culturally uh, rich and spiritually motivated this could be one of the reason why mindfulness actually could not play the play the role and correlate to the uh, social and emotional learning skills and uh, what we failed was i think institution like uh, higher education institutions could have a scope as well as the international you know like researchers and scholars scholars have a high platform to take bhutan as a sample and look at it as a different uh, platform to research on this mindfulness in relation to academic performance and others i think bhutan have a lot of uh, uh, scope to really look at it in you know like uh, putting uh, the unique case 
of where like uh, Bhutan is con considered as culturally rich and uh, you know like in different setting of uh, traditions. And Minister of Education and Political Leaders uh, could give importance to mindfulness practice and promote this practice. Now here, why I'm saying this is, it has been a Western uh, wave that has been pushing to bring up this mindfulness or any other uh, you know, like system in education. Then Bhutanese really pushing it through, to penetrate through the system and the governance aspect to make the policy you know, like implications. The window of uh, this implication is much better when there is a Western research or you know, the Westerners, in fact, uh, try to uh, really uh, align such practices in the systems and governance. And education sector could also allocate more time on mindfulness practice. And I think uh, this uh, could be one of the you know like uh, thing uh, Bhutan could take it uh, take it as a, you know like a spiritually rich country because. Uh, by listening to so many speakers today, we could find that uh, even uh, the timeless uh, wisdom of Buddha and mindfulness is one of the basis for this to get enlightened or any kind of uh, understanding of wisdom. Mindfulness can be ground, good ground for Bhutan and Bhutanese. And uh, I think uh, this is where, uh, in terms of research as well as application, Bhutan can also join the fraternity around the globe. Thank you.